Well, good day, everybody. This is Joe, and I am an office supply junkie. Yes, that's right. We're going to talk a little bit about a new project called the Nightstand Jotter. Stay tuned. Have you ever had the experience of waking up in the middle of the night and some idea is floating around in your head and you just have to write it down? That's happened to me occasionally. And it's happened enough that I decided to leave a little notebook and pen on my nightstand for those occasions when I might want to write something down, like wake up from a dream and you have some kind of a phrase or a line that you want to save, maybe a little pun or a, some kind of an interesting name or word, or maybe it's just some recollection, or maybe you have been restless, can't get to sleep, and some idea is floating around in your head and you have to write it down. Well, whatever the case, um, I started making these little neat notebooks. These are staple-bound notebooks made from a single sheet of letter writing paper. I was using, I happened to have at the time, one of these black uh, Bic Crystal medium uh, ballpoint pen, so I would just sort of leave it like this in my nightstand drawer. But as it turns out, this system isn't really very conducive to actually using it at night in the dark when you have your partner next to you sleeping and you don't want to wake them up and you don't want to turn on the whole nightstand lamp and flood the room with light. So I only ever use this maybe in the morning after I got up and I had something that was on my mind from the night before. So it didn't really end up being very practical. Then what happened was yesterday we went over to one of our local bookstores that I hadn't been to in a while. This is Page One Books in Albuquerque up on the corner of Eubank and Wantabo. I had ordered a book online and they had it to pick up and while I was there I found this nifty little mighty bright book light and this is kind of the heart of my new nightstand jotter system. So I've been looking for a book light to use for my nightstand jottings late at night and uh, this one struck my mind because, well, first of all, uh, it has a nice clip, obviously. It has a flat silicon rubber kind of arm on it that is uh, very flexible. It has a dual LED that's 3000 Kelvin color balance, so it's not so blue. It's more of a slightly yellowish light for late at night. And uh, the principal feature of it though is it's rechargeable. Instead of using those CR1024 whatever coin batteries that don't last very long, this one's rechargeable which is what I love about it. It comes with a little USB charging cable and you just press the little button and it comes on and it works really good for illuminating at nighttime. Well one of the things I wanted to do is use up this little notebook before I went on to any other kind of paper system. But I know that for late night writing in bed you don't have a table surface, you're going to have to hand hold it, and so you need something that's more conducive to writing by hand holding. You need some kind of a hard backing to make it rigid. You need like a miniature clipboard. And I ended up with this sheet of uh, copper, and it was kind of rough cut, so I rounded the corners and did a lot of filing and sanding on it, so now the edges are very smooth. And it's kind of a nice little uh, looking uh, little thing. You can hold it like that very comfortably. And here is the um, notebook right there, but we're going to be using a light with it. I could just use the light as the clip that holds the notebook to the, the backing, right? So, for instance, right here where I left off in the notebook, I could uh, hold it right like that, and that looks like it might work okay. It gets a little fiddly. It wants to kind of slide around, so this uh, means I probably want to get like a second clip, like a binder clip. Maybe put it like here. And it looks like it might work okay, just like that. I could leave it in my nightstand in the daytime when I'm not using it. I can take it out when I go to bed and lay it on my nightstand with the light already deployed. But I still have a few issues with it. Well, for one, it's a little small, this format of paper. Uh, secondly, holding it like this, gripping the backing part, having this side flipping paper is kind of a nuisance, especially in bed. And, and then, of course, I'm going to need a better pen. The whole intention of this system is you have an idea you want to write down. You can very quickly grab it off your nightstand, turn the light on, get your pen and write it, and then put it away and go back to sleep. That's kind of my intention of this. So this can work, but it's a little fiddly and not ideal. What I do like about this thin sheet metal clipboard is 
it works really good with a pin clip. It'll clip right on it very easily and secure it like that. Whereas if you're using a thicker piece like a piece of masonite board, which is what the classic clipboards had, you're not going to be able to clip your pin on it as easily without coming up with some other system. One of the other issues though I have with this configuration is simply that the clip, the length of the clip, starts to cut in on your writing surface, especially with a short notebook. Now you could move it over to like here for instance. This particular notebook is narrower than the backing board so it does give you room to clip it here but I'd rather almost have the clip on the other side and again this gets to the issue that I don't really like this paper format. So uh, I started looking around what is an ideal paper format for handhold writing and it turns out to be reporter's notebooks and I do have a, an assortment of reporter's notebooks this is the Ampad evidence brand reporter's notebook and I started this back in the year 2010 and this went up to 2011 I really enjoyed using these reporter's notebooks I'm almost thinking this might be a good system right so this particular one is four inches by eight inches in size the uh, bottom corners are rounded and it has a spiral coil binding on top there's another brand that's very similar. I think the Ampad one I get at Staples. There is an Office Depot brand reporter's notebook. That's another big box chain uh, office supply store here in the United States. This one is also 4 by 8 inches as I measure it. The corners, however, are not rounded. I don't know if that matters. The other difference between the two is the Ampad one here has... a the cardboard front and back covers are pretty thin. They're very flexible, whereas this uh, Office Depot brand one, it has a really heavy back cover that makes it more like a clipboard. It doesn't bend as much, and of course the front cover is thinner, a thinner piece of cardboard. So I like that thick cardboard heavy backing on it. The other brand of reporter's notebooks is Field Notes. Field Notes is more of a higher end notebook company. They're custom made or in small batches I should say here's the front cover there nicely made so this is about a quarter inch narrower than those other two same length approximately just a quarter inch narrower I like the field notes and a lot of the parts of it so it's coil bound on top spiral bound but it has a fold over cover like this that opens up and they always include really cool things in it like uh, little maps of the US and all the information about the notebook what it's made out of and all that uh, and of course this has nice uh, ruling it's a nice cream colored with some brown lines rounded corners again really nice it has a pocket in the back for putting stuff in notes in but alas the cover is flexible it doesn't give you the rigidity that you might need although that may not be an issue typically when I hold a reporter's notebook like this I put my index finger on the back to kind of brace it and I can certainly see it would be good to use for writing the whole question though comes down to how do you secure a book light to the reporter's notebook right so the problem is that the clip here is only roughly four millimeters thick at most and so this coil binding is a little too thick. It's just gonna, it's not gonna secure it, it's gonna slip off. And I think of the three that, that I have here, I think the Office Depot one is really built the best in terms of having the thick back cover to make it more rigid. And it's gonna be a lot less expensive than the Field Notes brand. These are always kind of premium priced because of their small batch. So again, the uh, coil binding, it's not ideal. So thinking about this, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this upside down. Um, now there are some benefits to operating a notebook like this upside down. So if you're using the reporter's notebook in the traditional configuration, let's say you are a reporter, you, you're hurriedly taking notes and you get to the bottom of the page you're gonna to have to stop and kind of flip the paper up against the force of gravity and make sure it goes over the coil binding good before you can continue whereas if you're using the notebook in the upside down mode then you get to the bottom of the page just go like that and you can continue writing go like that and you can continue writing it's a little bit quicker and when you get a break in the action you can stop and neatly fold it uh, 
as time permits later on. Now, of course, the context here is writing something late at night in a darkened bedroom with your partner asleep, not wanting to wake them. It's not hurried note-taking like you're a reporter at a press conference. That's not the point. But you want to kind of minimize the amount of fiddliness that you have to do to make this system work. And I kind of like this idea. Let me show you how this might work. So um, I open up the notebook. I flip the front cover around, so now the front and the back cover are together, right? And then I'm going to clip the clip onto, like that, onto the covers as they're sandwiched together. And uh, what that does for you is it gives you, at least with this brand of, of notebook, it's rigid enough. It gives you a nice mounting point for the light. It's not going to easily come loose. And then when you're writing late at night, uh, you wake up, you have an idea, you want to write it down. If you get down to the bottom of the page, you can just flip that quietly uh, and continue writing. And then when you're done, you can just fold it, put your pen back in here, put it back on the nightstand, turn the light off, and go back to sleep. And also the two covers being together gives you a nice place to put your pen, right? So I think this is going to make a neat little system. I've started it, I'm doing it already last night. In fact, I woke up last night uh, not able to sleep, and I, w I had this system ready to go, but I was thinking about ways of improving, and this is where I actually got up late at night, found this notebook, and found my pen and that I'm using, and actually made a whole page of, of jottings. Uh, let's talk about the pen a minute here. Obviously, you could go with a ballpoint pen that has a clicker, all right? And my thinking is you want to try to keep the sound down as low as possible. You're, you don't want to wake up your partner. Again, I don't like the pens with caps. For one, they're a little bit fiddly because you could drop the cap or lose it. It's just not an easy one-handed operation. Um, I also don't really like a lot of the ballpoint uh, cartridges. I actually do like the Bic Crystal cartridge for writing, but these gel pen cartridges are just so much better. Now this pen is a Retro 51 Tornado brand, and it's a balloon, a French balloon motif pen. It's a really nice one, gel pen, and what's nice about it is it's a twist to actuate, so it's quiet, silent operation, twist to actuate. It has a nice clip on it, nice weight to it, it's not too big. Now there are a couple caveats to this. Well, first of all, as you're using the notebook and you have paper now that's been used, flipped around to the back, these loose pages are going to start getting dog-eared, especially if you're going to be throwing this in your nightstand drawer in the daytime when you're not there. As the, the pack of paper gets thicker back here, it's not going to be as easy to clip the light to because it only has roughly four millimeters of travel here. Now you could unclip everything, take the pin out, and kind of fold it away in the daytime when it's in your nightstand. That's a viable alternative and then when you go to bed you just have to remember to take it out open it up where you stopped off at where you can start writing again then you can put your clip on it put your pen on it ready to go leave it on your nightstand so it's ready to grab when you want to write late at night it's not ideal though one of the problems with these loose pages being dog-eared, one of the ways of fixing that is you can get a rubber band. Now these are the blue, what I call broccoli bands, the bands that come uh, with a bunch of broccoli at the grocery store in the vegetable section. And you could put like, you know, a rubber band here, something like this to keep those loose pages together so they don't go flying around in the nightstand and get all dog-eared. But it is kind of fiddly here. You can see I'm kind of struggling with it, getting the paper nice and tight. When you come to the end of the page, you can kind of pull it, but it sometimes extra sheets come loose. It is kind of fiddly, and there's got to be a better solution to it. But that's not the biggest problem I have with this. The biggest problem I have with this is the quality of the paper. I'm forced to use a nice writing pen like a gel pen, but what if I want to use a fountain pen? I find fountain pens don't work well on every kind of paper, and the kind of paper that I really like is the kind of paper that my friend Ethan found for use with our, our hand-stitched notebooks. And this is a heavy, I don't remember the weight of it, 
uh, probably 30 something pound laser paper. It's really slick feeling, it almost feels like magazine quality paper. It takes fountain pen really well. Uh, it's unlined, so it's okay to have lines, right? But sometimes you want to draw also, and I, I do kind of like the aesthetic of hand scribbling notes on unlined paper because you can change the size of your writing and make the lines closer together. You don't have to conform to the spacing that they make you conform to in in a line notebook. So it would be nice to make my own notebooks in this rough form factor with my own paper that's more fountain pen compatible. So if I'm going to be making my own custom kind of reporter's notebook out of really fountain pen compatible paper, I would start with some American letter size paper, 8.5 by 11 inches, and I divide it into three and five eighths wide columns and I can get three pages plus a little bit of extra wastage out of one uh, letter size sheet. So I'll use a paper trimmer, I can cut these up. I'll have a stack of really good paper for use with either fountain pens or gel pens or whatever I want to use. Much more like the kind of paper I've been using here. Okay and the result are these three and five eighths by eight and a half inch long uh, strips of paper. They're a uh, half inch longer than the reporter's notebook paper. If that ends up being too long, I can certainly cut a little bit of paper off, but at this point I'll probably keep it like that. So the next question is how do I turn this into a handheld notebook system? Well, I need a heavy cardboard backing and I need a way of binding it together. Now I could just use a stiff piece of some material like either thin sheet metal or masonite board or something and use a binder clip, right? I could use a, a heavy binder clip to bind it all together and then clip maybe the light onto it somehow like that. That would work. The problem with that system though is if you're laying in bed late at night, your partner's asleep, and you've written down toward the bottom of the page, and you want to change pages, it gets kind of fiddly because, okay, you're going to have to unclip the clip, unclip the light, and now you have loose pages, loose from the backing, you have to pull off, kind of reorder them, get them kind of arrange neatly, put them back on the board, clip your light back on, clip your binder clip back on, or whatever. It's just interrupts the writing process. Everything is a little loosey-goosey and kind of not ideal. So I need a binding system. And this is where I started thinking about the ARC uh, is one brand. This is the, the disc binding system. And I they make some uh, punches for it. This is the inexpensive punch. I have a f fancier punch also. But uh, disc binding systems are neat because you can um, unbind the, paper, the pages and rebind them as you want, right? They pull out, you can reattach them or whatever. Uh, so in the width here that I'm talking about for this three and five eighths wide paper, it looks to me, well, you could use four rings and that would give you a middle blank spot that you might be able to put the clip through but the problem is it actually won't fit because the clip is wider than the space between the bindings so I'm gonna probably have to use this as a reverse system with the binding on the bottom and open on top like that okay so if I'm going to do that there's also a problem of these two holes end up being too close to the edge of the paper and these two little tabs of paper are too weak and they're going to probably tear off so I'll probably bind it with three loops like that right and that gives more room uh, away from the, the corners of the paper so it's a little more secure so you have these holes half round holes with little slots and they should interlock into the disc binding system just fine like this, right? I think that's going to be a nice system and they stay secure. So the other thing you might want to do to these pages before you bind them up is corner punch them. Okay, so I'm making a, a maquette or a mock-up of the cardboard uh, disc bound system. So just using a single layer of this uh, legal pad cardboard and I'm using my heavier grade uh, disc binding punch. Feels like it's uh, stressful on the system. 
Well, we'll just have to pretend like uh, this is bound by itself. I don't have any spare uh, binding discs right now, and I don't want to take apart this notebook, so we'll just pretend like these three discs are on their own. And so here's our front and back covers and some paper inside. We would open it up and actually flip this front cover around to the back and clip the light to it and then also have room to uh, clip our pen to the covers when we're not using it, but it looks like it might be a very interesting little system. Uh, as you fill up the front page, use it up, you simply quietly pull it off and set it aside on your nightstand so the next morning you can deal with it later and continue writing as you want to go. And then when you're done with it in the morning, you can just close it up like that and stick it in your nightstand. And it's going to be a nice little system, I think, for nightstand jotting. Well, you guys know me well enough by now to know that uh, I usually go overboard with these things and try to over-engineer it. So you don't have to make your own custom bound, disbound, bound uh, thing unless you really want to use fountain pen and need the better quality paper. I think just getting a good reporter's notebook with a stiff binding, getting one of these mighty bright lights that are rechargeable and having a good like a gel pen or whatever that writes good on this kind of paper is going to do you well for nightstand jottings and sketchings and just recording ideas. I think it's a really cool little system. Um, one of the things I really enjoy about having available something to write with is the things you think about when you're asleep or when you first wake up. It's the kind of thing that you generally don't think of in your waking state because your mind is in a different place. I have a number of little scraps of paper like this that I've used for nightstand jottings, and I don't know where all of them are, and I really want to get to the point where I can uh, keep all my nightstand writings together because some of it might be some kind of a continuing thread or whatever, but here's an example of something I really like. This was June 12, 2017, so a little over three years ago. Quote, I code for places you can't easily get to, unquote. Now, that was from a dream, and I woke up, and that the only thing I could remember at the time was that quote, and I have no idea what the dream was about now. I code for places you can't easily get to. To me, sounds like maybe I was reading some William Gibson science fiction, cyberpunk science fiction, but that sounds like the start of a story. That sounds like a really cool inspiration for some kind of a science fiction story. I don't know really what it means really, but it's something important. And that's what I think is uh, interesting about being able to wake up at night and record something on paper is I know people have done this uh, called dream journaling. I've never done it. I don't know if it's easy to do, but the idea is you wake up from your dream and immediately write down what the dream was about. And supposedly over time, you can get better at recalling your dreams, that making that connection between your, your waking state and your sleeping state, right? So I don't know if you guys have been involved in dream journaling or any kind of other late night nocturnal bedside writings, but I'd really like to hear your comments on this. I think a system like this is really workable. I like the longer size paper because it gives you a place to support your hand when you're writing in bed without a table, right? Uh, having it convenient, easy to use, not all fiddly and not where it all falls apart and everything rechargeable light instead of using those uh, dinky little coin batteries that are so much of a nuisance. Anyway, a system like that might come in handy, and I hope this gives you guys some ideas for making your own nightstand jotting system. Well, leave a comment down below if you have any ideas or thoughts about this. Have you done dream journaling? Have you regularly recorded your thoughts late at night when you wake up from a dream or just have crazy ideas you can't get to sleep? Let me know down below. Let's hear about it. Well, until next time, you guys, of course, stay well and stay healthy and stay creative. Until next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.